Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the five things, the five things that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces happening on the 2nd of March 2022. Though before we do dive into this, I also would like to know if you have any other things to share or add. So what are some other things that you think others need to know? Of course, I will be talking about five, but I'm sure there is a lot more to be said. Right, so with all of that then, let's do this. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces is that it will conjunct the sun in Pisces at 12 degrees, creating the number three in numerological terms. So here we are with another 12 degree new moon, another number three new moon, three representing curiosity, communication, creativity, clarity, wit, and playfulness. But then the new moon, well, new moons are all about new beginnings and setting intentions. They represent a time when we plant new seeds. And at the same time, we reflect, we contemplate and we go inward. And with this new moon being in Pisces, well, we are reflecting upon things like compassion, forgiveness, dreaming, believing in the impossible, empathy, imagination, fantasy, sensitivity, serenity, and spirituality. Now, in the full moon in Leo video, I talked about how often I, I find Leo energy to be challenging. I have placements in my chart that show these challenges quite obviously, but another energy I find to be challenging is Pisces. <laughs> I have Pisces in my seventh house with zero planets in Pisces. I also have Neptune, the ruling planet of Pisces in Capricorn, making an exact degree to my Venus in Capricorn. So they are the same degree. And then Jupiter, the other ruling planet of Pisces. Well, that is retrograde in Virgo conjunct my Virgo rising. And of course that Jupiter, Vir that Jupiter Virgo energy is opposing my Pisces in the seventh house energy. Let's just say I can be realistic to a fault. I can look at the negatives instantly. I can go to the worst case scenarios quite a bit and I can pick myself apart like crazy. I can be really hard on myself and super critical of my appearance, though I'm really not trying to share this to gain um, sympathy. Then again, maybe the Pisces in the seventh house energy is kind of saying unconsciously I am. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not very kind to myself. Now, thankfully, I have been working on these things over the years. I have been trying to address my fears and my insecurities and so on, on and so on with the help of somebody who is professional. But the thing about the sign of Pisces is that it teaches us about showing others and ourselves compassion. It teaches us that there is a great power and wisdom to be found in being empathetic. Likewise, there's strength to be found in forgiveness. So to forgive others and to also forgive ourselves. I have forgiven people throughout my life and they have forgiven me. And so due to this forgiveness, we can continue our relationships. However, there are other relationships that have not continued. And whilst I might forgive someone that does that does not mean that I have to continue to have a relationship with them. And so perhaps you can relate to this in some respects when it comes to your own life, you know, when you reflect on this information. And also in this respect, forgiveness, it's not so black and white. I think it is dependent upon the act by which you or someone else seeks forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't mean letting someone else back into your life. You can decide, of course, to choose peace. Still, however, forgiveness helps us to let go of things like resentment, anger, and vengeance and bitterness. 
Forgiveness can help us move on from a situation. Moreover, compassion and empathy can help us understand another person's feelings, what they might be going through, what they might be experiencing emotionally. Compassion and empathy can help us build rapport with someone else. Empathy helps us feel for others and compassion helps us extend our hand to help. So if you notice your friend or your partner is struggling, for example, maybe uh, they just lost a relative. Well, to show empathy is to listen to them when they express their feelings. You do this with no judgment. And so to show empathy is to give them that space to let their emotions out. And to show compassion is to ask them if they need anything, to ask them if there is anything that you can do to support them. You know, I said a moment ago that I have Pisces in my seventh house, I have a Pisces descendant. And back in October, sadly, my dad died. I think that's probably the first time that I've ever uh, said that in a YouTube video, but yes, my dad died. And my partner was the most supportive person. He was empathetic and he was super compassionate. He was with me every step of the way throughout that very challenging and difficult time. And thanks to his kindness and thanks to his emotional sensitivity, he teaches me how to do the same. I am very, very thankful to have a partner like him. And also, my friends, my friends have reflected these qualities to me within my life. And so all of this is to say, during this new moon in Pisces, consider these Pisces themes. So let's say this new moon is taking place in your 10th house. So looking at you Gemini, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect upon the empathy that you show towards your public image or towards your public position. Or maybe you set new intentions when it comes to understanding the public's feelings. Or perhaps you address compassion in association with your profession. Maybe you hire someone new, for example, and you discover that compassion is required on your part or maybe you forgive a member of authority for their actions, or you practice forgiveness when it comes to your life path. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your sixth house. So looking at you Libra sun, moon and risings, perhaps during this new moon, you reflect upon how compassionate and empathetic you are towards your coworkers, or maybe you think about your health. So looking at how self-compassion can impact your physical health for example perhaps you set new intentions when it comes to your health or maybe you forgive yourself or you forgive others for previous health related choices or maybe you plant new seeds when it comes to your daily lifestyle and routines you do so with the intention of showing kindness and care or let's say this new moon is taking place in your second house. So looking at you Aquarius sun, moon and risings, perhaps during this new moon, you reflect upon empathy in association with your earning potential or in association with your financial situation. I know for me with being sick, I wasn't so kind to myself because I felt like I was falling behind financially. After all, I am my own boss and so earning depends on myself alone but that's not very empathetic. <laughs> then again, perhaps you set new intentions when it comes to your skills, but you do so with sensitivity. Or maybe you reflect upon compassion in association with your self-worth. You forgive yourself for having a lack of boundaries, for example. And this leads me on to the second thing, the second thing that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces that is that um, the sun and the moon will both conjunct Jupiter in Pisces. Keeping in mind that Jupiter will also conjunct Neptune during this new moon. So the sun and the moon might not conjunct Neptune, but Jupiter will. And so during this new moon, perhaps it's important to consider our boundaries. Often it is our lack of boundaries that leads us to being hurt or being disappointed, for example. When we continuously give without a healthy exchange of give and take, we can become resentful. We can become quite bitter. 
when we lack boundaries, we let other people walk over us. We also don't share how we feel or we might not share how we feel whenever we lack boundaries. We may not express what we truly think about a situation either. Plus, we might rely on others to tell us what to think or how to feel and then we get mad or upset because we don't feel heard or we don't feel understood. And so during this new moon in Pisces, yes, consider things like compassion and empathy and forgiveness and so on, but perhaps it's also important to consider how you set boundaries. Reflect upon what is too far, how you are overextending yourself, how you make multiple sacrifices whilst your cup feels empty. Also, consider the the Jupiter in Pisces themes, such as spiritual fortune, inner truth, vivid imagination, vivid dreams. I mean, my dreams have been crazy, though they usually are, but they've been quite intense and quite vivid lately. Um, Also, believing in miracles, happy retreating, dreaming big, serenity, hopeful healing, and once in a lifetime opportunities. These things may be felt strongly during this new moon. Perhaps you set new goals and intentions when it comes to these things. Though I think imagination is a big part of this new moon, especially seeing as Jupiter and Neptune, they're both coming into the equation and Jupiter and Neptune are actually home in the sign of Pisces here. So this is a big new moon in Pisces. The energy is quite intense. Though on that note, I want to just share a quick story about imagination. So this is something that I experienced during a group therapy session. We were talking about how a baby is calmed down by its mother, how mothers help soothe their babies. So during moments when our survival feels threatened, it is often our mother who protects us. This is also clearly seen within the animal kingdom. But during this discussion, I felt myself drifting into my mind. I started rocking myself back and forth. I visualized a mother cuddling her baby to to sleep um, and placing the baby in a crib. And as I was as I was doing this, my therapist noticed and he asked me what I was thinking. And I told him what I just shared with you, you know, what I was imagining. And he said that to imagine is to bring something to life. Now, I did ask him more about this and he basically went on to talk about the importance of imagination. And I can help but think about imagination in association with Pisces. Perhaps when you're having a bad day, for example, you could imagine yourself relaxing and watching a, your favorite television show. This might make you feel more at peace. Or perhaps you could imagine um, what motherhood would be like. I mean, I suppose looking at myself as an example, that is something that I was visualizing during that session. And maybe I could also imagine other things about motherhood, imagining the rewarding things about it rather than being super critical. (laughs) As I imagine all the things that could go wrong. (laughs) So... During this new moon, use your imagination, consider your dreams, and like I said, contemplate boundaries. So let's say this new moon is taking place in your ninth house, so looking at you Cancer, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon you contemplate boundaries when it comes to your beliefs, or maybe you set new goals when it comes to boundaries in association with your morals, or you set intentions when it comes to higher education boundaries. Then again, maybe you use your imagination when it comes to further training you're doing. You imagine what your life would be like if you finished that training program, for example, or you imagine yourself traveling somewhere far, far away. Maybe you have dreams of going to a certain place, a place of relaxation. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your fifth house. So looking at you Scorpio, sun, moon and risings. 
Perhaps during this new moon, you contemplate your boundaries when it comes to your creative projects, when it comes to hobbies, or maybe you set new goals when it comes to these things, or maybe you plant new seeds when it comes to boundaries that you have within your romantic relationships. Then again, perhaps you use your imagination to visualize a brighter future within love, or maybe you imagine what your life would be like if you started that new leisure activity, or perhaps you possess dreams of having children one day. Maybe you imagine how fun life would be with children. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your first house, so looking at you Pisces sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you contemplate your boundaries when it comes to your actions, when it comes to your life decisions, when it comes to how you approach situations, or perhaps you set new intentions when it comes to these things. Or maybe you set new goals when it comes to how you cope with these things. And as you do, you consider your boundaries. Then again, um, perhaps you imagine what your life would be like if you changed something about your outlook or if you change something about your physical appearance. Maybe you have dreams about your life path that you would like to truly live out. And so you visualize and you imagine these things. Perhaps you really want to discover something new. Okay, so the third thing, the third thing that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces is that both the sun and moon in Pisces will semi-square Venus, Mars, and Pluto in Capricorn at 27 degrees. Now, whilst the semi-square is a minor aspect, it still points towards friction and tension. But there is also the opportunity to reduce this friction. You can take action to lessen the tension. And in the case of Capricorn planets coming into the equation, perhaps these semi-squares, they are associated with things like doubt, fear, perfectionism, pessimism, blockages, restrictions, coldness, and gloominess. As somebody who is quite dominant in the sign of Capricorn, and I have a lot of planets in Capricorn, maybe I will feel these things um, during this new moon, but maybe they're also uh, teaching me lessons. So whilst you may be setting new intentions that involve imagination and empathy and forgiveness and so on, well, you might also feel blocked. You might feel limited. You might doubt in your dreams. You might be fearful of the unknown. You may hesitate or you might feel the pessimistic friction. You might also experience intense feelings as well as a need for control and power, as if you must control what is happening around you. Or you might experience some psychological upset. Likewise, you might be unwilling to let things happen, okay? Just to trust in the process, to have faith in the process possibly due to fear and insecurity. And as you try to visualize your dreams, you engage in self-destructive tendencies. But like I said, you can take action so you can lessen these tensions. So on that note, let's say, for example, this new moon is taking place in your 12th house. So looking at you Aries, sun, moon and risings, this means the Capricorn energy is transiting your 10th house. So as you imagine behind the scenes, as you said, um, as you sit with your dreams and as you reflect deeply upon new possibilities, perhaps you feel this doom and gloom surrounding your career. Doubts and fears, they start to come up. Maybe you are going through transformations within your career or when it comes to your life path, things are just really changing for you. But during this new moon, you experience these intense feelings. You start to feel all of this negativity towards your life path even. You start to be super hard on yourself. Perhaps you diminish your dreams due to your own insecurities and fears and so on. But maybe you can take action to lessen these feelings. You can combat these feelings by taking time to yourself, for example, by retreating, by going inward. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your eighth house. So looking at you, Leo, sun, moon and risings. This means the Capricorn energy is transiting your sixth house. So as you are imagining closeness and intimacy and emotional bonding, as you contemplate your dreams in association with shared resources, perhaps you experience intense feelings surrounding your lifestyle and work. Maybe you feel like you aren't doing enough, or maybe you feel as if there's all this pressure to achieve at work. 
Then again, maybe you are going through transformations when it comes to your health or when it comes to work as well. Perhaps you possess fears and insecurities surrounding these things. But maybe you can take action to lessen these feelings. You can combat these feelings by leaning on an intimate partner, for example. So the fourth thing, the fourth thing that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces is that that the moon and the sun will sextile Uranus in Taurus. Now sextiles, they often point towards support and aid. There is a supporting element to the placements involved. And so in the case of Uranus and Taurus with the sun and moon in Pisces, perhaps this support, um, it involves things like materials and finances mixed with empathy and sensitivity, or maybe this support involves loyalty and commitment mixed with emotional depth and understanding. Perhaps there is something generous and healing about this combination, but there's also something practical and holding and comforting about it. However, as a collective, we have all been experiencing the impacts of the Uranus and Taurus transit. So looking at things like independent living, financial freedom, liberating ourselves from greed and possessiveness, aligning ourselves with like-minded people who share similar values. Similarly, perhaps we have experienced or have been experiencing major breakthroughs when it comes to money and income, or perhaps we have experienced security disruption and blow ups when it comes to tradition. But during this new moon in Pisces, maybe we can consider our materials and our possessions, but we can also consider our feelings in association with these things. We address commitment and stability, but we also address our dreams. We think about the physical material world, but we also think about the emotional spiritual world. So let's say this new moon is taking place in your fourth house. So looking at you Sagittarius sun, moon and risings, this means Uranus is transiting your sixth house. So whilst you have been experiencing much change within your daily routine and your working life, whilst you've been experiencing breakthroughs when it comes to your health, well, you've also been learning a great deal about compassion and empathy within the home. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect upon your living situation dreams, but you also take your daily life changes into consideration. Maybe you set um, new intentions when it comes to your home, but you also support these intentions by doing things differently at work. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your 11th house, so looking at you Taurus sun, moon and risings. This means that Uranus in Taurus is transiting your first house. So whilst you've been experiencing breakthroughs when it comes to your life path, you've been experiencing a lot of change when it comes to your identity and your physical appearance and so on, well, you've also been learning about compassion and forgiveness and empathy, etc. when it comes to your future goals, when it comes to your hopes and your wishes for the future. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect upon these future dreams of yours greatly. You imagine what your life would be like. Maybe you set new goals, but as you do this, you also take your path, your life path changes into consideration. You reflect upon how you have bettered yourself, how you have evolved as an individual. And then the fifth and final thing that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces happening on the 2nd of March, 2022, is that Venus, Mars and Pluto in Capricorn will trine the North Node in Taurus during it. Now trines are harmonious, they can show a nice flow between the planets or placements involved, there's a smoothness about trines, but in the case of the North Node in Taurus mixed with the Capricorn energy, this is a great time to consider your long-term material and or financial plans. It's a great time to think about what you would like to achieve when you put in the work, when you remain consistent. By remaining focused and by being persistent, you can achieve great things. Your accomplishments may also be sustainable and long lasting. However, these accomplishments are not going to happen overnight. It can take a long time to reap the rewards of our labor. Therefore, it is important to be steady, patient, committed, and determined. Now, like I said, Uranus is also in Taurus, so keep, do keep that in mind. Therefore, sudden changes and unexpected events, they are possible. Disruptions and blow-ups are possible. Still, however, 
with this harmonious energy flow between Capricorn and Taurus, this is an opportunity to be practical and hands-on. And so during this new moon in Pisces, consider what you are building what you're working towards. So on that note, let's say this new moon is taking place in your seventh house. So looking at you Virgo sun, moon and risings, this means the Capricorn energy is transiting your fifth house and then the north node is transiting your ninth house. So during this new moon, maybe you imagine what your life would be like within your relationships. Perhaps you reflect upon empathy and compassion within your relationships, but perhaps you also consider what you would like to achieve long term creatively, what you would like to pursue long term creatively, or you consider the longevity of your creative projects, or maybe you think about pursuing a higher educational achievement of some kind, or you think about publishing something. And by working on these things consistently, you can reap the rewards. Then again, perhaps a long-term goal of yours is having children, or maybe you want to do some long distance traveling with your romantic partner. Or let's say this new moon in Pisces is taking place in your third house. So looking at you Capricorn sun, moon and risings. This means the Capricorn energy is transiting your first house and the North node in Taurus energy is transiting your fifth house. So during this new moon, maybe you imagine things to do with your writing or your speech, Perhaps you reflect upon empathy and compassion within your daily interactions, but perhaps you also consider what you would like to achieve throughout your life, what type of accomplishments you desire, and you consider the direction of your life. So where your life is headed right now, maybe by pursuing something creatively, this can be added to your list of achievements. Or maybe your creative projects, they showcase your skills and your talents. And by working on these things consistently, you can then reap the rewards. Then again, perhaps a long-term goal of yours is becoming an expert at something. Or maybe you feel ready to make a big step in your life. You feel ready to make a big commitment in your life. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video talking about the five things that you need to know about this new moon in Pisces happening on the 2nd of March, 2022. Now, again, if you do have anything else that you would like to add, so what are some other things that you think other people need to know about this new moon? Certainly let us know in the comment section down below and also let us know your thoughts and your opinions today. But with all of that being said, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.